Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can make this. So let's get started. I'm just saying this is going to be one of the more longer tutorials since this is a pretty complex thing. So, first, we should probably make like the actual locations where you're going to spawn. So I'm just going to make that real quick. gonna be making like I'll make like four and there'll be different biomes remember to act, add um a spawn point just a part in every bot well like teleport area just call it um call it like um um, TP place, I guess. And then, um, just make sure it can collide us off and it's anchored. Just so it doesn't fall. Because this is, like, where the player is gonna actually be, like, teleported, like, the spot. So then, I'm done this. So, just gonna click this. Okay, sorry. Now I'm gonna continue. Alright, so now that I'm done building everything... Okay, so, um, I'm just gonna do something that'll make, um, the script a bit easier. So, first, I'm just gonna grab all the TP, like, place parts out of every, um, biome, and then I'm just gonna put it in workspace. And what we're gonna do is basically we're just gonna, um, name them, instead of TP place, we're gonna name them, like, the biome, like, sort of where you're going to be teleported. So for example, I would call this like Autumn. And then I call uh, this one, I call it Desert. Then I do, oh, okay, yeah. And then I name this one uh, Grass. And then this one I would name Winter. And then we're just gonna make like a folder so we can put all these places in there. So just um, press the plus by workspace and then press folder. Then I'm just gonna rename the folder to um, uh, TP places. <laughs> I don't really know what to name them. So I'm putting them in there. And uh, just make sure they're anchored, like I said. And then I'm just gonna make another folder for the actual maps. So I'll just name it maps. Then just drag these into here. There you go. So now, let's actually start making the GUI. Alright, so now that um, we're done like the actual maps, we can work on making the GUI that the player is going to use to teleport. So first, go to Starter GUI, press Screen GUI, and insert it. And basically what a screen GUI is, it's basically like what allows you to like place GUIs like text labels, frames, etc. And uh, yeah, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the frame, and it's like this right here. And I'm just gonna name this uh, holder, I guess, because it's holding the buttons. So a plugin I like to use a lot, well that you should use a lot. It's called Personal GUI Rescaler. What it does is basically, so you know um, how like different devices have different sizes for the screen? This basically just makes it so that any GUI will fit on all types of screens. So I will link that in the description. 
All right, so I'm just gonna put it right here. Gonna make it a bit bigger. There we go. And this green line stands for like, I guess like its position. So I know it's like in the center, like along the center. So next, I'm just gonna make the background transparency like 0.7. And another plugin I use, I like to use is called Roundify. And basically it just roundifies the corners of like the frame. Um, now I, I just, I say this is more useful for like frames, but yeah. So yeah, now that we've done that, uh, yeah, and I will also link Roundify in the description. Next, what we're gonna do, wrong thing. So we're just, uh, you wanna insert a text label, because like it's, we're just showing um, text saying, and we're just gonna call it, um, locations. So I'm gonna make the font source sans bold. And make sure you press text scaled, and it just makes it is like big enough so it fits the frame. Just gonna make this white, and I'll name it locations. There we go. Next, uh, for the final touch, I oh, know, and we can name this like title. Next, I'm just gonna add like um, I guess like an underline, just to make it look cool, I guess. So just. Adjusting this. There we go. And you know, you're, as you can see, there's like the border. So how we can get rid of that is for a border size pixel over here. Just set that to zero. And now we won't see it. All right, so now that we've finished with that, we can actually place the buttons. Also make sure um, you use the rescaler thing so um, it fits. All right, so I'll just name this underline. Now, I'm gonna insert a text button, because like, we're pressing it to go to that certain area. I'm gonna start by, okay, I'm just gonna put this in the center a bit. And then I'm gonna roundify it. And then, I'm just going to, um, oh, uh, yeah. Basically how this works though is you have to like change, if you wanna change the color here, you have to do it like this, like the background. So yeah, I've done that. I'm just gonna customize the text a bit, like the color and the font. And yep, there we go. So first, this one will make it desert. So name it desert, and then make the text desert as well. Next, we're just gonna duplicate this and move it down a bit. Alright, and now I'm just, I'll name this grass, and then make the text grass, over here, then duplicate it again. Okay, I know this isn't going to exactly be equal, but who cares, we'll name this, uh, yeah, I'll just name it winter, because, uh, Oh, never mind, snow. And there we go. Next, I'll, and the last one, I'll just name Autumn. Like, like so. Alright, so now, now that we've finished the GUI, we can actually start on... Oh, make sure to, again, Make it so it fits. And yeah, now that we've done this, we can start on scripting it. Alright, so first what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be using remote events for this tutorial. And basically remote events, they're just like useful for like carrying on like sort of like broadcasting things to like the server from the client. So like basically for example like if the if the player touched a certain thing, like, uh, if the qu player clicked the GUI, since that's on the client side, it would transfer to, like, the server, and that's where we can make, like, it do things like, I don't know, like, give them points, for example. Because if it, we did it on the client, you know, like, it would only, they would only see that they got points, and it wouldn't, like, affect the entire server for them getting points. 
So yeah, sorry if I didn't really explain that well. So yeah, let's go to replicated storage, and then remote event, and let's just name this, uh, teleport. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by placing a local script inside of the text button, and I'll just name this, um, teleport as well, I guess. So, we're gonna do, um, script dot parent dot mouse button one click so like when when basically when it's clicked connect function and yeah first actually oh yeah and then player my bad so yeah now to, uh, we're just putting player in the parameters because basically it's like you know the player that um clicked the button GUI because it already like knows because it can, it can like figure out who who like actually clicked it so it now has the player as a variable so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do um game dot replicated storage dot teleport colon fire fire server fire server and then we're just gonna do script dot parent dot name because this, since we named um, the G, the text labels like the location, and what and what we're carrying, basically we're just carrying on like a variable, so we're carrying on just the name. So this here, when we sent it, when we send it to the server, it would carry on the word desert. So yeah, now we're just gonna. All we need to do now is we just need to paste this into all the other things. There, there's nothing we need to change. Alright, so now that we've done that, we can now make a script in server script service, just a regular script, and we'll name it uh, teleport again, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> so now we're gonna do game dot replicated storage dot uh, teleport dot on server event connect function player so the player who fired it, and then, comma, uh, bio. Basically, um, whenever you're doing, like, remote events, the player always goes first, and it, like, ignores the, of uh, anything else you sent, like, at the, like, if the, since we sent the variable first, usually it would just, it would probably think, like, the player is like that, but we can just make the player here, sort of. And then, you can also just name it whatever, like, you want the variable. But, because it just knows, but it knows what you're talking about, though. Since biome just stands, so, in this case, biome would just stand for, like, the name of what we chose, right? I'll explain it more later. So what we're gonna do is local char equals player dot character since we're going to be moving their character to the like location right so now we're going to do uh local teleport spots equals game dot workspace dot tp places so now what we're going to do is for i v in pairs teleport spots colon get children do so basically what we're doing is we're looping through everything that's inside of this folder since like they're like the children of that folder if you know what i mean and v stands for like the variable for like ev the thing that it's looping through so like v could be autumn desert grass and snow so we're gonna do an um if we're gonna do if v dot name equals equal equals um biome then since um biome is like the name of the place with the button and since we named them the same thing as the teleport places we're gonna see if that's the same basically which see we're seeing which one we selected so then we're gonna do char dot humanoid root part dot position equals v 
got position. So now, let's see if this works. All right, so we, oh, I forgot to anchor that, sorry. But we can do it later. So if we click desert, we're teleported to desert. Click grass, we're teleported to grass. Snow, teleported to snow. Autumn, and teleported to autumn. There you go. I hope this got this helped you guys, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.